communism is this like bad, absolutely horrible thing, and you know, like socialism is just this completely atheistic nightmare of whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, like there are certain reasons for it, and like the idea of like people coming together to like work together, and you know, they all help each other. And it even goes back to like, you know, the Native Americans and just like very social cultures. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, we're just so capitalistic that it's, you know, whatever denies your own profit and gain is completely evil. And, you know, just that to me is evil. You mm -hmm. know, your own profit and gain, not caring about anybody else. Yeah. I wonder what the. Texas Board of Education, what, you know, the Cold War, how they Right, did the, yeah. Like, my, you know, again, I came from an <coughs> extremely liberal district. You know, we had our, our textbooks would have the things, oh, you know, the, the typical line, like, on paper, our communism looks really good and espouses all these great values, but it goes totally wrong in practice, and uh, that's led to the Cold War, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. You know, um, American corporate interests in Asia, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, geopolitical, you know, uh, real politic, like, yeah. none of this really comes into the textbook. It's just a matter of, um, Uh, the Soviet Union and then China became a juggernaut mm -hmm. that needed to be stopped. But I, you know, you hate to think what, um, and, and the, probably the books I already had in Texas, there's just no, no even sense of the fact that communism looks good on paper or that Marx had any decent things to say at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, I haven't yeah. seen in textbooks, but if they're going to uh, relegate Tom Jefferson to some marginal position. I can't imagine they'd have anything good to say about Marx at all. Yeah. But then you, you know, it's odd because then you look at like the, like, any Christian theologians who aren't like Southern Baptists tend to make far more use of Marx than John Locke or something. Yeah. I mean, he's an important figure for, you know, even a theology, like, despite the fact he's a, you know, he was an atheist mm -hmm. or something. You know, it's kind of hard at some point when you're talking about the spirit of history to say, well, what yeah. does this mean? But, um... I mean, it seems like what is what's sort of being announced is just a culture war. Is that at some point um, people in America who grow up with an education that we consider liberal and people who grow up in, in, not only in Texas, but this thing is going to spread because Texas, uh, all the states around it, like, they get the same textbooks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Texas, like, buys so many textbooks, and companies can't, like, make, like, their Texas textbook and then mm -hmm. the other ones. So, I mean, what's going to happen is, I mean, the country becomes more, well, it seems like it's, almost inevitable that the country becomes more polarized. That people who learn the Texas way and then people that learn like the coastal way. Mm -hmm. And they'll have nothing in common anymore, like no common touchdowns to turn mm -hmm. towards any longer and say, well, these are the values of the country that we have in common that we can... Yeah. There just won't be that anymore. So instead of like a culture of conversation and understanding and listening to different viewpoints, it's just like, hey, it's what it is, or we're yeah. use our power to make it be that way, and then, I don't know, maybe 
Yeah, I mean, I guess to some extent, you have to look and say, okay, well, what's the ideology that's, um, you know, that's at work? And even framing things in terms of a pluralistic sort of, well, everybody has their own truth, like, who benefits and who doesn't mm -hmm. because of that. And you can even but, say that too and do something else. But, you know, still be saying that. You mean just like, a lot too, like, like say it in theory, like, oh, I know that this yeah. is yeah. true. Yeah. And you can mouth the words, but then not live as though it is. But, yeah, I mean, I guess too, if. It's probably helpful if there's something more than just like. Um, unadulterated pluralism that yeah. is um, at work in the, in the attempt to say, well, we have to look at things from... Uh, well, there is something else at work besides just um, in pluralism, besides just a sort of anything goes. There's no such thing as truth outside of an ideology. Mm -hmm. In saying we have to look at things from other people's perspective, it's more true to look at things yeah. from other people's perspective. Because then what you're saying is, sure, truth is always relative to a framework, but we should try to look at things from different frame, different perspectives mm -hmm. and within different frameworks. And, you know, so where does that, that we should, that this should come from? Yeah, I mean... I think you're right, it's not going to do anyone any good to just be like, hey, you know, this is what it is. It's kind of like <clears throat> allowing the different frameworks to exist and instead of trying to be like, nope, nope, that's wrong. It's yeah. wrong because I'm seeing it this way. And it's just the nature of, I think you were talking about like how things just move, yeah. like ideas morph and evolve and mm -hmm. things happen like you need like um, magnets they're two sides you know I mean, things mm -hmm. yeah but I think even beyond I mean you could sort of look at history in terms of well now we'll just make ideas the actor and we'll just look at history in terms of uh, and this would be a more of a Foucauldian way look at things. We'll look at history as in um, different lineages of ideas mm -hmm. intertwining and coming into conflict and yeah. um, merging, you know, in different ways. And then, you know, people just become sort of passive recipients of, you know, people are the, the chips on the table or the pawns mm -hmm. and the board and it's yeah. it's ideas that are at work here as though people themselves have no agency to resist even if it's just a matter of ideas mingling mm -hmm. as though people don't um can't resist and hold on to ideas or have no agency to say maybe it would be better to to um, allow the, the, the notions that I have to undergo some sort of trial and change in whatever way. I think, um, because if, if, it, if, as soon as history is just this battleground of ideas, then there, there's no longer any position to say that, uh, there's something wrong in what Texas is doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just one set of ideas stealing itself for the long run against, you know, yeah. against others. Like, yeah. one strategy would be to sort of a, a, adapt, and another strategy is to draw a line, you know, yeah. fortify yourself, and it's yeah. a period of fortification, and that's just what it is, yeah. you know, you don't have a position to critique it. 
if it's if it's just a matter of you know memes and their struggles and mm -hmm. interactions. Um, I think I mean I think we have to look at what is it even what makes truth possible. Um, we we have truth because we recognize that we're as an individual firstly that we're not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, like a I don't want to say a non human and say that humans are alone in having truth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most other living beings don't. I mean, we could be pretty sure about that. At least it doesn't seem as though they do. No offense, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Nico looks really offended. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I, generally speaking, you know, other beings besides humans just... There's no sense of... Oh, what is this from the perspective of this other bit? It's just you know everything is uh, is a uh, spur towards um, you know satisfying whatever need is felt mm -hmm. at the moment. There's no sense of what things are outside of this living activity of the individual. You know everything is just what it is for the being, mm -hmm. and to have any sense of truth, you already have to have a sense of. Uh, Okay, the universe isn't for me, you know, there's mm -hmm. other beings, and I think, I mean, with that already comes a sense of obligation to consider other beings, and, uh, you know, a, relation to, a relationship to other beings outside of whatever they might be for my own, um, you know, my own activities. So I think, I mean, already when you, you know, in the, in the most, like, elementary notion of truth, something has to be objective in order to be true. Mm -hmm. Somebody else has to agree with me in it. Mm -hmm. Or it has to be the sort of thing that somebody else, were they in my shoes at least, would assent to also. Where they, where I'm standing now looking at things, they would say the same thing, yeah. something like that, in order to be true, it, the truth isn't just food, hung, you know, yeah. like spur towards, you know, um, so I think, I mean, already you begin the process, you, you have the possibility of truth by saying, I need to think about how other beings are affected by this, or, mm -hmm. or something, you know, something outside of just like, this is my own sphere and my own, uh, what matters to me. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I mean, that's something to allow for, I mean, if we see that this isn't only the possibility of, of having something like truth at all, but then also the continued possibility of uh, once we have a particular community that looks at things in such and such a way, the continued possibility of uh, um, reflecting upon our own beliefs and saying, mm -hmm. well, how do these measure up to these people who live across the way, who yeah. seem to think think about things differently and, you know, especially if you realize that the way we think about things is now, um, makes things meaningful to us towards the needs of our community, no longer mm -hmm. the needs of an individual being, but um, to some extent maybe the community takes over from where the individual left off once you have a being that's capable of truth. Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't know, I don't, I don't think we have to fall into like a pure relativism, but that isn't to say that we should hold out the chimera of some sort of like absolute framework mm -hmm. or some privileged framework. But maybe, say, 
look and try to see what is the possibility of having a framework um, to begin with, something yeah. like that. Even though it's going to always be problematic because you're still, look, you know, but just because we're going to be attempting to look at the pre-framework, pre-framework condition or something, yeah. through frameworks doesn't mean that, um, that that means that there is no, can, like, prior condition to having some framework within truth is possible. I mean, it, to some extent, I mean, the fact that we have a sense of objectivity, and I don't think there could be a way of a framework that has no sense of objectivity, mm -hmm. that very fact, I think, means that there, there has to be something that's prior to yeah. the framework. I didn't mean to go too much into that, but I just, I think it's, there, there doesn't have to be this sort of, like, dichotomy between, like, oh, well, this is, there's got to be one true way of understanding things and one true body, mm -hmm. one true body of truths. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like that on the one hand, and then the other hand, no, I'll, you know, yeah. there's, there's only different frameworks and anyone is as good as any other, and, you know, something like that. Like, the, these might seem mutually exclusive positions for which there's no middle ground possible, but I don't think that that's really the case. <laughs>